Today, we learn how to DIY some VR stuff. Hello everybody, and today we're going to be talking about VR stuff and all the VR-ness. Because VR is a pretty big thing right now with the Oculus Rift being out, with the HTC Vive coming out, and the PlayStation um, Move, or the PlayStation VR, whatever that is, that being unveiled at E3, or more showcased in E3 as far as I know. And so I wanted to do this video and try and kind of talk about how a DIY alternative, how to do this cheaply for anyone on a budget, because HTC Vive being $800 and the um, Oculus Rift being close to $600, it's really expensive to get on this VR thing, so we're going to be talking about that. Um, I'm going to have this in a couple of different parts because this is going to be a lot of more, a lot of involved stuff once we get to more of the software stuff. So this is more, more just basing off of hardware right now. So let's get right into this. First off we have right here, the whole headset itself. This is just a VR box I got online for uh, $12 or $11, $13 I think is what I got, got it for. So this is more just like a testing thing. If I want to do this even further, I'll have to end up getting a more expensive one. Because you can have the Google Cardboard, um, those are really cheap for you to get. This one, like I said, was 11, close to $11. The newer versions are $30-ish. And then it just, the higher up you go, the more and better it gets. Uh, the Gear VR, the Gear VR would be great for this, but again, $100 that I didn't want to spend, so $11 for this. That takes care of the headset, but now how do you actually get the stuff going into the headset, like the feed, so you can have the actual game on there? Because I'm not talking like some VR games for the cardboard, I'm talking like actual, literal, from your computer to this, you can play a HTC Vive game on here, or you can play an Oculus Rift game on here. Alright, so to play the games actually from your PC onto the phone, you need a different, so you need a software for the PC, and you need a software for the phones. Okay, so for both of them, there's one that's an easier one to use, this Trinus, Trinus, I'll put a link in the description down below, VR, Trinus VR, and that one is a general desktop one. It converts any window or desktop that you have open on your computer onto the phone. It transfers it through either a cord over Wi-Fi, over Bluetooth, one of those that you use. The cord is obviously faster, but if you have a Verizon phone, it makes it a lot harder to do that. AT&T and the other like, you beat us there. You connect, you get the app on your phone, Trinus VR, again, I'll put that in the description down below. Download on your phone and download on the PC. Now, after you get them connected, it'll start transferring stuff from the PC onto the phone, stick it into here, and it works like that. You have to tweak it a little bit depending on the headset, but yeah, that's each for you to decide. The next thing we have is Riftcat. Riftcat is something you download for the PC and the phone. After you download the PC, you click clock, click some of the options, click clock. You click some of the options on there, and it starts transferring the stuff to the phone. It makes the PC, the PC makes it to think that the phone itself is either an Oculus or an HTC Vive, depending on which one you plug in. So if you go turn on Steam VR with it turned on for the Vive one, it'll actually read it as the headset. The controllers we're going to get to in a minute, but then um, I'm about to say something about the prices. Try this VR and Ripcat both have free versions that allow some 10 minutes of playtime, so you can try to test it with your device and see if it'll actually work. But then after that 10 minutes, you just get to have to restart it. But if you want to go for the full version, which gives you unlimited playtime, so you can play for hours on end, which is probably not the healthiest thing. Try this VR is I think $15 for the full version, and then Ripcat is I want to say $20 for the non-beta testers. Beta testers get it for $15 if you're a late beta, and if you're an early beta, you get it for $10. If I remember correctly, I think that's what it was. But you get those, you stick them on your phone, connect it to the software on the PC, adjust things a little bit, and then it'll start working for you. Alright, great, so we got the whole headset thing done. How are we going to get the controllers now? Because the HTC Vive has the Vive controllers, and the Oculus Rift has the Razer Hydra controllers. So how are we going to get around that? Because we need those for some games. The answer lies in PlayStation Move. Or Leap Motion, but we'll, we'll just focus on the PlayStation Move right now, because this is the closest controller thing that we, we actually have. So, the PlayStation Move, although it was not best implemented back whenever it was actually a thing for PlayStation, I enjoyed it on some games, it wasn't great on all of them, obviously. But, it has found new life as a VR controller for PCs. So, what we're gonna wanna do is, I'm gonna actually get, I'm gonna create a new video for this, explain a whole lot more detail on actually how to do it later on, but for right now, dealing with software stuff, but for right now I'm just dealing with the hardware right now. We're gonna need the PlayStation Move control, we're gonna need the PlayStation Eye, any cam uh, I think most any camcorder will work. I think there's a specified list that will work, but I'm just using the PlayStation camera because I know this one will work for sure because it's built for tracking this. PlayStation Move controller, it's best to have two, but you can work around with just one. And then navigation controllers. These are a little bit more difficult to work with, but they're still implementable, but we're not focusing on these right now, we're just focusing on this. So after we install the drivers for the camera, we get all that stuff, a lot of working around PlayStation, Sony stuff. After we get the drivers installed for this, we get the software, we 
use these, and then we can pretty much make the computer think that these are Vive controllers. So if we have two of these, we'll literally have the two Vive controllers that will be able to work as the controllers with the glowing ball as tracking. The one thing this glowing ball is actually useful for is actually going to find new life in VR for this. So with that being said, and that's the PlayStation Move side, we have the Leap Motion side. If you guys don't know what the Leap Motion is, pretty much what it does is it uses infrared cameras to read your hand movements. It's not plugged in right now, so it's obviously not working, but if we plug it into the computer and boot up the software, then we can pretty much just stick our hand above it and it'll read our hand as a skeleton hand for its software to use. So when it comes to VR stuff using this, we can use it as a Vive controller very carefully. Um, using various softwares, you'd attach it to the, or not software, various things, like I'm gonna just use duct tape to test it out, but we'd stick it on top of the, by, uh, on top of our headsets like this, or something like this, and then the software that we use, we'll use our different hand gestures, I think a couple of them are like, different things like this, and it uses, pretty much maps it to different buttons, so we can use them for various things as HTC Vive controllers. I have not tested this, so I can't tell how accurate it is, or how useful it is, Unlike this, where it's actually like a controller that you're physically using to move, this one's just your hands, so it's a whole bunch of guesstimating and invisibleness. We're gonna have to work on that later. Again, I'll show tutorials for both this one and this one. It's just gonna be a little bit longer for me to get that stuff out. Alright, so that's pretty much it for the parts list that you're gonna need for all this stuff. I've gotten this successfully working as a head mount display. I'm just working on getting the controllers to work, which is something I'm still trying to tweak with the software. I am not building any of the software, guys. I am not a coder. I'm just a guy who knows how to use the code after it's been made. So yeah, I'm not that guy who's building all this stuff. I'm gonna give credit where credit is due in the description down below with all the softwares. So yeah, guys, this was me trying to just explain the hardware list and everything that we're gonna need for this DIY. VR stuff to connect it to the computer so we can have our own Moculus Rift or Hacked Vive or anything like that. So just stay tuned for the me explaining how to like get this working, how to get these working and all that. Just stay tuned for all that. They're going to be coming out slower or a little bit slower because I have to record those on the computer and uh, try to regurgitate the knowledge that I actually just took in. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Stay tuned for more of this stuff. Um, this was just the part list going over. We're going to be going over the software in the next episode. Right now, about pricing for the build that we have so far, going off of Amazon prices, we're about, I think this was 15 on Amazon, and then this was, I'm gonna say 20, so that's 35, or 30-ish, 35. Um, this was like $5, so we're at $40. Just for, just for the big three things that we're gonna need right here, if you wanna go with the Leap Motion way, which we haven't seen anything about yet, um, this is about $70 or $80, so this is the more expensive route. Um, thankfully, I got this from a gift from a friend, so thank you! Um, yeah, so click that subscribe button. I'm going to be going over the software stuff later. I love you all. Click that subscribe button to see more of these videos, and check back really soon for the next part of this DIY VR stuff. Later, guys.